The story begins with Natsuhima Atsushi, a starving, lonely, homeless orphan who encounters a man floating down a river. Atsushi dives into the river and rescues the old man, and he introduces himself as Osamu Dazai, a suicidal maniac. Dazai's colleague, Dopo Kunikita, yells at him from across the river, and they treat Atsushi to a meal of chazuke in a tea house close by. This is where Atsushi discovers that Dazai and Kunikita work for the Armed Detective Agency, or ADA a secret organization full of individuals who possess supernatural abilities. Now, as different as that seems, Dazai and Kunikita explain to Atsushi that they're searching for a tiger who has been ravaging the area's warehouses and livestock. Atsushi recalls that a tiger was indeed following him when he traveled, and he helps the two agents by posing as bait to capture the tiger. Dazai slips Kunikita a note, and he takes Atsushi to a warehouse. Upon further questioning, Atsushi explains that he was kicked out of the orphanage due to the tiger ravaging it, and dealing too much damage while looking for Atsushi. However, Dazai concludes that Atsushi has the power to transform into the tiger under moonlight, which is his supernatural ability. The full moon is revealed, and so is the tiger side of Atsushi who pounces on Dazai. Dazai uses his special ability, No Longer Human, which halts the supernatural powers of the people Dazai touches. He subdues Atsushi as Kunikita arrives at the scene with backup. Together, they decide to make Atsushi a fully-fledged member of the Armed Detective Agency. Atsushi wakes up in a dorm room owned by the ADA. He wakes up to Dazai's call, who claims that there's an emergency. It turns out that Dazai was attempting suicide again, living up to the name of Suicidal Maniac. Atsushi decides to look for a different job outside the ADA. Dazai offers him help as the two run into Kunikita, who hurries them to the site of an actual emergency. A man has taken hostages and is threatening to blow up a building. Dazai and Kunikita play rock, paper, scissors to determine who would distract the criminal and who would take them down. Kunikita loses and attempts to negotiate with the bomber, but he's ordered to get on all fours and shut up. Atsushi is dressed as a paperboy, who successfully distracts the bomber, which gives Kunikita ample time to subdue the bomber and take him down. Though it's not as easy of a situation after the bomber manages to press the detonator. In a desperate attempt to save his friends, Atsushi jumps in front of the bomb to try to protect everyone else. The bomb doesn't go off. As it turns out, it was all a test to see if Atsushi would make a good decision. Now, he's ready to be a fully fleshed member of the ADA. The president of the ADA leaves the decision to Dazai, who deems Atsushi worthy of becoming an agent. A woman named Higuchi Ichuyo requests help from the agency to help her deal with some smugglers. Kunikita warns Atsushi about someone named Akutagawa, a member of the Port Mafia. A huge fight breaks out when Higuchi reveals herself as a member of the Port Mafia and attacks Naomi. Junichiro is there to help and retaliates with his ability Light Snow, but he's defeated by Akutagawa as he appears from nowhere. Atsushi transforms into the tiger and begins to battle Akutagawa. However, the battle comes to an early stop when Dazai appears and uses No Longer Human to halt their supernatural abilities. He reveals that he saw through Higuchi's act early on, and Akutagawa reveals that Dazai used to be a member of the Port Mafia himself. A lot of rumination occurs here, and after the encounter, Atsushi wakes up at the ADA clinic, where Tanizaki is shown to be healed by their doctor, Yosano Akiko, through some very unorthodox methodology. However, Kunikita reveals and warns Atsushi that the Port Mafia's guerrilla squad might enter the ADA. He also suggests that they do something before things get worse. Meanwhile, Higuchi calls for the members of the Black Lizard Squad, consisting of Tachihara, Horitsu, and Jin, to infiltrate the ADA. Atsushi returns to the ADA after a phone call to find the agency completely holed up, only to reveal that the members have the upper hand against the team, to which Atsushi almost cries, thinking that he's lost them all. Later, Atsushi is tasked with helping Ronpo, one of the most intelligent detectives in the agency, to help him with a murder case. It revolves around a dead policewoman. He uses his special ability, Super Detection. Ronpo reveals that she wasn't killed by the Mafia, but rather it was a copycat crime committed by a corrupt police officer. Near the end of the episode, we find out that the murderer was bribed by a corrupt Diet member to kill the policewoman. It also showcases that Ronpo doesn't have a supernatural ability, but rather his sheer intellect is his only weapon. Dazai Osamu's entrance exam revolves around a series of cases involving the Azur King, where the victims are tourists who are taking a cab, and then they are never to be seen again. 
Rokuzo, an orphaned hacker, is helping Kunikita. He validates a tip and they're able to save one of the victims from drowning in a water tank. However, they're unable to help the rest of the victims who are stuck inside a gas chamber due to the risk of being poisoned themselves. Kunikita figures out that the taxi driver has been an accessory, and they manage to hand him over to the cops. They get a notification that a bomb is planted. Kunikita, Dazai, and Atsushi set off to help it with the help of Rokuzo and Ronpo, as well as the president in finding the location. They are interrupted by a man having the power of numbers and his partner. Kunikita and Dazai's duo manages to prevail, and they're able to stop the blast from happening altogether. Later, when Kunikita goes to the graves of the people who died, Sasaki also visits. Sasaki claims her former partner was a man of ideals, but she's saddened due to his death. Dazai calls Kunikita to a place where he claims is the mastermind behind these crimes, but Dazai mentions that he has lured the mastermind by mailing them only to find Rokozu enter the location. It's quickly clarified that Rokozu is only there because he hacked the males, and the real mastermind enters soon after him. Rokozu pushes Kunikita out of the way to save him from the mastermind's bullet, but he gets shot himself. The mastermind lowers her gun, claiming that Dazai can't shoot her now, since that would be using excessive force. In reply, he hands his gun over to Rokozu, who shoots her to avenge his father's death. Now that the threat is gone, a normal day starts at the agency when Atsushi asks where Dazai went. He doesn't know that Dazai was kidnapped by the Port Mafia's newest assassin, Izumi Kyoka. Atsushi is dragged to Yosano's shopping trip, which ends with both of them on board a train as the doctor is fascinated with his regeneration abilities. However, an explosion happens, which is orchestrated by the Kaiji Motojiro. Yosano fights with the bomber, and Atsushi meets Kyoka with her terrifying ability called Demon Snow, which allows her to control a phantom through a recipient in her phone. Atsushi wins the fight, but he finds out that Kyoka is a suicide bomber and jumps out of the train. He rips off the bomb vest and saves the girl in the end, while Yosano beats the ever-living crap out of Kaiji and then heals him. Now that Kyoka is saved by the agency, Kunikita reminds Atsushi that this girl had killed 35 people and is currently most wanted by the government. Nonetheless, Atsushi still treats Kyoka to a lot of places she wants to go, and even buys her a stuffed rabbit. Once they are done, Kyoka immediately heads to the police, but Atsushi tries to stop her. Before he can do anything, Akutagawa appears and stabs him with his ability, taking Kyoka away. Meanwhile, Dazai is still locked up at the Mafia's torture room in chains. He taunts Akutagawa that Atsushi is a better student than him. A new character named Nakahara Chuya appears, as Atsushi wakes up in a cargo ship after getting kidnapped. Kunikata races to save Atsushi. Chuya and Dazai, however, get into a brawl where they remember Dazai's tenure with the Mafia when Chuya and him used to be partners. Chuya asks why Dazai never tried to escape when he had the opportunity. Dazai said that he wanted to save Atsushi from being sold since he has a 7 billion yen price tag on his head. Chuya abuses and curses Dazai until Dazai eventually reveals that he holds the secrets of the Mafia and that he should die. Every Mafia executive will get executed and their secret scheming will come to light. Dazai taunts Chuya to try and kill him, but Chuya decides not to. In fact, Chuya lets Dazai go and gives information on Atsushi's buyer. Kyoka attempts to save Save Atsushi, but Akutagawa stops it and expresses his qualms for Kyoka leaving the Mafia. However, Kunikita shows up and rescues Atsushi, and Kyoka had already rigged the ship with explosives to let Atsushi escape when Atsushi decides that he will save her instead. So before Akutagawa can kill Kyoka, Atsushi appears and has an all-out battle with his nemesis, Akutagawa. During their fight, Akutagawa and Atsushi talk about their ideologies. Akutagawa expresses his hatred for Atsushi since he wants Dazai's approval as a competent executive and how Atsushi got Dazai's respect very quickly. Meanwhile, Atsushi lands a flurry of attacks and gains the upper hand by punching through Rashomon's barrier and sending Akutagawa flying into the sea. Atsushi passes out after the toll this battle had taken on him, but he's dragged by Kyoku who takes him to Kunikita before the ship capsizes and sinks. Elsewhere though, Dazai finds out that Atsushi was actually bought by an organization called the Guild. Their head is a man named Francis F., and in the aftermath of Atsushi and Dazai's abduction, the agency must now decide what to do with Kyoka, the only loose end that is left. The Port Mafia also deliberates on what to do with Akutagawa, who is now in comatose while his enemies seek vengeance. Francis, the leader of the Guild, however, a North American organization of supernaturally gifted members, is the man responsible for the bounty on Atsushi's head. Fukuzawa refuses Francis's offer to buy out the agency, but their agents begin to disappear. Atsushi, Naomi, and Junichiro set off to look for the missing members, but soon Naomi is nowhere to be found either. The culprit is revealed to be a member of the Guild named Lucy. She trapped them in an alternate space with her power and of abyssal red. 
and it forces them to play hide-and-seek with a giant doll named Anne. Now, in order to release the captured ADA members, they must play this sick and twisted game. Junichiro is quickly captured by Anne, but Atsushi manages to get the key and uses it to try and release the captured members of the ADA. Atsushi isn't able to open the door with the key, and Lucy doesn't know how it works either, and decides to run away. He's pulled back by a doctor, who convinces him to save his friends. This allows Atsushi to defeat Lucy by outsmarting her and forcing her to deactivate her ability. He thanks the doctor, and the two bid farewell. However, Kyoka starts shaking with terror at the sight of the doctor. It's revealed that the doctor is none other than the Port Mafia's boss, Mori. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.